Welcome to the Saul's Newsstand News Review for May 22, 2020. An op-ed from Pat Boone states, Our new national pastime, printing funny money. Did you ever play Monopoly? Wasn't it fun to have little pieces of money, little paper bills that seemed like real money? And if you were good at it, wasn't it fun to wind up owning Park Place and hotels and eventually maybe winning the entire game? Did you ever try to actually spend any of those bills? Unless you were very young and had an indulgent grandmother who wanted to humor you with a cookie or some hot chocolate, you were reminded this was just a game and that your play money was only good when you were playing the board game. But now we're all grown up, aren't we? In a desperate effort to bail out or keep small businesses from simply vanishing and to rescue temporarily millions of Americans who have lost their jobs, their livelihood, their ability to provide for their families, Congress and the President printed up almost $3 trillion, backed by nothing but promises, and spread it out as best they could to the ones who needed it the most. Nice effort, crazy as it is, but now the House of Representatives is proposing printing up three trillion more useless pieces of paper to fund their political objectives in the guise of, quote, helping those out of work. Collectively, we've allowed our country to become no longer one nation under God, even though our currency still says, ironically, in God we trust, as it loses all value faster than we can print up more of it. Printing three billion more meaningless pieces of paper money will only make the whole game worthless. The Washington Examiner reports, Elise Stefanik calls for independent investigation into Andrew Cuomo's nursing home policies. Republican Representative Elise Stefanik is calling for an independent investigation into New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's handling of the coronavirus following news that the state was purposely underreporting death counts in nursing homes. The New York Department of Health admitted last week to omitting nursing home deaths and confirmed it was disclosing nursing home deaths regardless of whether the patient died there or in a hospital until around April 28th. But the department made a change around May 3rd and now only reports deaths if the patient died while physically present at the facility. Stefanik said she doesn't believe a fair investigation can be conducted by State Attorney General Letitia James. Cuomo has been widely criticized for not protecting nursing home residents in his state and mandating that nursing homes accept coronavirus patients. The vast majority of coronavirus deaths in New York City have been people 75 years of age or older. New York leads the nation with over 5,000 nursing home deaths. And finally, The Hill reports, nursing homes struggled with infection control long before COVID-19. Thousands of nursing homes struggled to follow infection control requirements long before the COVID-19 pandemic struck the U.S., according to a government watchdog report on Wednesday. More than 80% of all nursing homes surveyed between 2013 and 2017, about 13,300 facilities, were cited for at least one infection control deficiency in that time period and for failing to follow rules intended to prevent the spread of diseases like staff handwashing protocols, according to the report from the Nonpartisan Government Accountability Office, or the GAO. The infection control shortcomings are highlighted by the COVID-19 pandemic, which has spread rapidly through America's nursing homes, killing at least 28,100 residents and workers according to a New York Times tally. The elderly are particularly at risk for severe illness and death from COVID-19 because they tend to have weakened immune systems and underlying health conditions that exacerbate the disease. COVID-19 spreads quickly in nursing homes, which typically have tight quarters and communal settings. And that concludes your Saul's Newsstand News Review for May 22, 2020. For more political news faster, visit saulsnews.com.